Uh, when I was doing my Arch Linux installs videos some over the last couple of days, it made me think about it really, about the whole Linux situation, the whole distribution situation. And uh, probably if you're new to Linux, oh yeah, and by the way, if you if you installed that from my videos, congratulations, probably all two of you have watched it, maybe zero installed it, but if you were, apart from myself, able to install it, congratulations, can I say that? Well done. You now have a partially working computer, congratulations. But it made me think about something, which is, you've got, you know, thousands of distributions, some maintained on the desktop, some not, and all kinds of things. You really only need maybe three of them, three total distributions is all you need. And uh, it's probably easy just to explain why you only need those three, and all those other distributions just don't matter. So, I mean, the obvious one to start with is Arch Linux. And Arch Linux isn't really a distribution in the sense of <clears throat> you get a whole package of desktop environments and uh, I guess you probably can install desktop environments. I don't know. But it's a base install, really. It's the basics you need to fashion a operating system tailored to you for your personal use. And if you're installing the base packages, you will know that you have the minimum you need to have a working computer, but without all the bloat, without all the stuff that you don't need or want, and then you just build it up from there, completely tailored to you. I mean, it can be used for other things, I guess like, was it IoT devices? And, you know, I think there's like weird distributions of it, but the main package one, the base install, you are going to build it up from there and you'll have exactly what you need. So really on the desktop side, you don't you don't need anything else. Just just install Arch. Either use my instruction or somebody else's or follow the Arch wiki of course, the official way, whatever that means. Um and then I guess what else? Well the next one would probably be number two would be uh Debian or Debian, I don't know how you say it. And that's for your server. And if you're running a server for, I don't know, email, your own email, which I do, and you're hosting your website, which I do, yeah, you can do it with Arch. It's not literally a problem, but most people do it with something like Debian. And the reason you use it for your server rather than having it as your desktop, I think. People run it as their desktop. It's one of the oldest distributions. It's very well maintained for certain reasons, but which I'll explain. But the great thing about it for your server, for email hosting, for websites or something, is really you're doing one or two things all the time that never change. Getting email, hosting your website, these things are pretty much always the same. And what's good about Debian is because they don't really update their packages very often, most of the stuff is really out of date. It means that it's been thoroughly tested. We know it works. You don't need to update it. If there's a security issue, they tend to fix it pretty quickly. But that means it's not necessarily the best for a desktop because a desktop, you're gonna have lots of software and Debian if their repositories aren't always updated with the latest other software or whatever, then you're gonna have out of date software on your desktop. Basically things, ironically, are probably gonna break. Super stable in a server, not so on a desktop. And that's a weird misconception. People think Arch is unstable because you're updating it all the time. Actually, you want the latest changes for your desktop because you're running lots of different software that require lots of different packages. If you've got loads of mismatched packages, or you want the latest software or software that hasn't even been released on Debian. Well, uh, it's, it's a grey area. Some people use it or all they do is they use Debian with an unstable, as they call it, or testing repository. It's just, again, it's all this stuff's boring. Just use Arch for your um, desktop. Use Debian for your server or something like it. 
So really that just leaves number three. So what is number three? Well, if you're like me and you've installed Linux on other people's computers, <clears throat> or maybe you're literally just starting out and Arch and the terminal is just too scary, just install Linux Mint. And Linux Mint is gonna be familiar. It looks close to Windows, if that's probably where you're coming from. It's easy to install. Everything will just work. And this is for your desktop, of course. Everything will just work. Your computer will work on it. All your hardware will work on it. You'll have all this stuff you don't need or want, but it will just work. It's kind of like Windows, right? But maybe doubly faster than Windows. And unlike Windows 11, will actually work on your computer if it's less than, uh, more than four or five years old. So, um, yeah, just Linux Mint, or if you're installing it for somebody else, like I have, and you probably will, install on Linux Mint for the same reason. They're not going to care about Linux. I mean, who cares about Linux? It's just a tool that you need to do what you need for when you're doing your personal computer stuff that's tailored to you, whatever. I don't even know why I'm saying this stuff. But it's obvious, it's just a tool. So you need the right tool for the right job, and you know, family members or other people, they just, they don't want this hassle. They're not necessarily going to be thinking about tailoring it to themselves. They should, maybe, in the long term, but that's just not the world we live in. Anyway, so Linux Mint is perfect for that. It will just work. It's unbreakable, I would I'd guess. They're not going to be spending more time than they need to get in tech support from you. Imagine if you get them to install Arch Linux, you're going to be on this phone for every second of the day, giving them tech support, because they're not gonna either know what to do, they're gonna break something, and they're not gonna be watching my videos to know what to do. So just install Linux Mint for them, or get them to install Linux Mint, and they'll be happy. Anyway, that's pretty much it. Um, do you want the fake YouTube thing? Like, comment, subscribe. There you go. Anyway, that's it. See you later.